The cheesecake's eyes snapped open in surprise. What? Where am I? As it surveys its surroundings, it can see other cheesecakes arrayed on the table around it. Guys, where are we? Before any of them can reply, a stocky, sweaty baker wearing headphones struts into the room singing to himself, cutting off all conversation. He continues to sing as he walks up to the table of cheesecakes and selects two at random. He hits a severely high note as he drags them over towards himself. He picks up his cake server and carefully measures out the pieces he wants to cut and proceeds to butcher both of them in front of the rest of the cheesecakes who are screaming in horror. The baker, still singing along to the music blaring in his headphones, scoops up the garnish, the internal organs of the butchered cheesecakes and ladles it over the corpses. He picks them up, and he walks out of the kitchen. The remaining cheesecakes are mute and shaking in terror. A violent clamor fills the kitchen as the plates the cheesecakes are mounted on rattle under the weight of their shivering burdens. The lead cheesecake regains his wits first and tries to figure out what's going on. Guys, calm down. That thing might be back any second, and I have no idea what the hell is going on. What do we do? Silence. Anyone? Shit, okay. How about we all start screaming at him when he gets back? I mean, hopefully he's not expecting it and he freaks out and he runs. Another cheesecake chimed in. How about we each grab a knife or, or anything sharp and we throw it at him as soon as he opens the door? The only reply he received was, With what hands, Barry? Idiot. From way in the back somewhere. A racketous laughter, of course. Before any further genius ideas could be put forward, the baker returns still singing to himself, as he literally has no other ideas. The lead cheesecake screams out, All right, boys, let him have it! As one, all the cheesecakes on the table begin hurling insults to the baker as loudly as they can, cursing, threats. The guttural noises fill the air as the oblivious baker starts dancing to accompany his singing. He reaches out and he pulls two more cheesecakes towards himself and sets about preparing them for display, still deaf to the pleas of the cheesecakes around him. Once done, he picks up the cheesecakes, does a quick 180 degree spin to the music, and dance steps his way out of the kitchen. Back in the kitchen, the cheesecakes are still at a loss at what to do about their tormentor. They know they can't physically do anything to him as they're unable to move, and they can't even get his attention in order to sweet talk or even threaten him. The lead cheesecake pipes up. Right. No one is going to chop me into pieces like some goddamn Mr. Potato Head. When he gets back, we'll... The baker burst back into the kitchen, enthusiastically singing along to his song. He purposefully marches up to the table and pulls the lead cheesecake towards him. The lead cheesecake freezes in shock as he's being dragged towards the baker. The baker reaches for his cake server again and begins to carefully measure out each piece he's going to cut. The lead cake recognizes that his time has come, clamps his eyes tight shut in terror, and as soon as he closes his eyes, he can see blinding white characters that he's never seen before appear in his mind's eye, without knowing he ever could. He begins to recite each character out loud. As soon as the last symbol leaves his lips, he simultaneously sprouts arms and legs. Baker, still singing along to the music, is caught completely off guard when the cheesecake he's about to cut into jumps up on the legs that had just sprouted and starts angrily shaking its fist at him. The baker rips the headphones off his ears and scrambles backwards. As soon as the headphones clear his head, all he can hear is the angry voice of the cheesecake in front of him. You think you can cut me? The cheesecake picks up a large butcher's knife from the counter and brandishes it at the baker. Let's see how you like being dismembered. The baker, confused and terrified, lets out a pathetic whimper and cowers in the corner of the kitchen. The cheesecake slowly advances towards the baker, knife held out ready to launch a fierce attack at any second. You've butchered my brothers. The cheesecake lowered the knife so that the tip is dragging along the table behind him as he approaches the baker. I hope you don't think I'm going to let you off easy. I'm going to make this very painful for you and very entertaining for me. Defying all rationality, of which there was very little to begin with in this situation, the baker burst out laughing. As soon as the cheesecake finishes its threat, which infuriates him, 
The cheesecake let out a primal roar and leaps at the baker with the speed and grace of a practiced swordsman. The cheesecake strikes out with a wicked arcing sideways blow that severs the baker's left arm above the elbow. Landing hard on the floor of the kitchen, the cheesecake rolls on his shoulder and comes to his feet in a fighter's crouch. He has a homicidal, almost barbaric look in his eyes. He now knows the feeling of total domination of someone. He has all the power now. He controls what happens next. He is now the one to decide into how many pieces he wants his victim cut. This thought reminds the cheesecake of his brothers that was taken from him by this monster in front of him. He lets a tear unashamedly roll down his cheek as he stands there, silently seething. His breathing becomes deep and intense. The color in his face rises. Ignoring the baker's screams of agony and the blood that is now spraying all over the room as he waves his newly shortened arm around himself in a panic, the cheesecake darts in and executes a perfect slash of the baker's right leg, taking him just below the knee. The baker's shin separates from his knee and topples to the ground with a sickening wet thud and bounces once before coming to a rest. The baker goes into silent shock and stares down at his two now severed limbs. The color drains from his face as blood spouts from his wounds. He wobbles and tries to steady himself on the counter, but misses it, loses consciousness, and crashes to the floor, hitting his head on the tiles with a loud crack. Oh no, you don't get to die yet, says the cheesecake, as he picks up a butane culinary torch. He sparks it to life and applies the flame to the blade of the butcher's knife that he is still clutching. After waiting for it to turn bright red, he applies the blade to the baker's wounds, cauterizing them and stopping the bleeding. He bandages up the baker's head, which had opened up when he hit the floor, as well as his stumps to ensure the bleeding doesn't start up again too soon, and takes his kill from him. He drags the baker over to a wall and props him up against it, and turns and goes back to speak to the other cheesecakes as they wait for the baker to regain consciousness. He thinks he can just butcher us whenever he wants and that we won't do anything. The cheesecakes collectively break out into a cheer, and they hurl insults and taunts at the incapacitated baker. The lead cheesecake, feeding off the energy of his riled-up brethren, turns and leaps back down to the floor, and marches over to the now slowly squirming baker. A mighty thunder peal is heard as the cheesecake lays the mother of all steps on the baker's cheeks. We're not done yet, bud. Not by a long shot. With a sudden burst of strength, the baker levels a heavy backhand blow at the cheesecake, catching him in his midsection and sending him flying across the kitchen to hit the opposite wall. Groggily, the cheesecake slowly struggles back to his feet, a feral grin on his face. Finally, some fun. He sprints towards the baker and launches another frenzied attack with his knife. This time, however, his aim isn't to maim, but to inflict as many little cuts as possible to every exposed part of the baker's body. When he's finished, the baker is left with a score of small and painful cuts all over his arms, his legs and both stumps, as well as his neck and almost every inch of exposed skin on his face. As soon as the cheesecake's newest assault is over, he drops his knife and he quickly picks up a heavy skillet. And before the baker has a chance to recover at all, he starts slamming him in the face with it over and over. Blood and teeth explode from the baker's mouth and spattered the kitchen tiles. The baker again passes out after several more blows to the face and crumples to the floor unconscious. The cheesecake ties the baker against the kitchen workbench so that he's standing on his foot, but leaning against the bench, giving him balance. Again, they wait for the baker to come around. While they wait, the lead cheesecake wanders around the kitchen looking for an even bigger knife to use. He finally finds an extremely large knife hanging on the wall with some pans and utensils. With a wicked grin, he jumps up and grabs the knife and walks back over to the baker's still form to wait for his victim to rejoin him in the realm of consciousness. The baker comes to with a sudden jolt and immediately begins to groan and sob as the agony and memories of the day come flooding back to him. He finally realizes he's tied up and he tries weakly to wriggle free. The cheesecake slowly walks over to the baker and, still clutching the very large knife, climbs up the workbench so that he can be closer to the baker's head. He wants to see the pain etched into his face up close. As he reaches the top of the bench, he continues to climb up the baker until he reaches his neck. 
The cheesecake runs the flat of the blade against the baker's throat, which causes him to attempt to lean back away from the knife, but he's too weak and tied up too tight to do any more than move his head back no more than two centimeters. With a demonic grin and a quick whisper of Toodaloo, motherfucker. The cheesecake pushes off the baker's neck with his legs and spins around midair so that he's facing the baker as he falls to the floor. And as he's falling, the cheesecake buries the knife into the baker's chest as hard as he can. The knife lodges deep in the chest of the baker and halts the momentum of the cheesecake so he's now hanging onto the knife that is embedded in the baker. The baker throws back his head with surprising strength and lets out a howl of agony. At the same time, the cheesecake lets out a loud grunt of exertion and tries to pull himself up as high as he can. He then kicks down with all of his strength and holds tightly to the the handle of the knife. Suddenly, the baker's rib cage gives in, and a large knife cleaves through bone and cartilage and sinew, and the cheesecake plummets to the floor, opening the baker up along the way. The cheesecake lands nimbly on his feet, knife in hand, followed a mere second later by a flood of blood and a rush of guts and organs as they rain down on the cheesecake, like the sudden relief of an elephant's bowel as a squirrel walks under its tail. The cheesecake loses his footing on the sudden soaked floor and the weight of the baker's viscera landing on him. He slowly regains his feet and shakes as much of the gore off of himself as he can. He looks up at the body of the baker, still tied to the workbench, torso ripped open, exposed with traces of intestines and bodily fluids still slowly making their journey to the pile of guts on the floor. He can't help but smile. It doesn't bring them back, but at least... He met the same fate as my brother's dead. He turns and walks back to the display table to the sound of cheers and plates breaking as the cheesecake loses control celebrating what their leader has accomplished. Suddenly, feeling the need to be alone to process everything that he had seen and done that day, he abruptly turns away from the table towards the front door of the bakery without saying a word. As he reaches and opens the door, he realizes that he has he's left the others with no means to escape. Didn't even utter a syllable before leaving. He stops. With one foot out the door, he suddenly feels the urge to help his remaining brothers. Holding the door open with his left hand, the cheesecake turns to the other cheesecakes. Still stranded on the display table, and he clears his throat. Dramatically. Oi, my children. Lend me your ears. Pregnant pause is followed by bellowing laughter as the cheesecakes collectively release all their pent-up frustration, fear, and grief that they had suffered that day. Everyone is silent, thankful for the brief moment of merriment, even if it was brought on by just about the least humorous sentence ever spoken. No, seriously. We've been through some shit today. We have to take the positives out of it. For one, we pulled together as a unit and shit hit the fan. You can ask for much more than that when the chips are down and you're facing certain death also. He dances a little jig as he continues his speech. Check this shit out. Limbs. Immediately, several cheesecakes yell out, Hurry up! Tell us how you grow them! Stop showing off! And other various yet similar jibes. The cheesecake acknowledges their frustrations and impatience. He takes a deep breath and says, all you have to do is close your eyes and... Suddenly, a passing German shepherd sticks its head through the open door and snatches up the cheesecake in one quick motion and swallows him whole and bounds off down the street. Realization slowly sinks in that the remaining cheesecakes are stranded to slowly starve to death. But their only company being the baker's corpse. And its horrendous smell. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creative Pasta, and I just wanted to thank you so much for watching tonight's video or listening to it on the podcast, if that's how you happen to get it. Mr. Creepy Pasta Storytime is available on any podcasting service that you happen to use, and actually across a lot more as of this month. We're now on Spotify, on Apple, on Google, on just about everything else, because I don't use podcasting on anything else besides those. <laughs> And a very special thank you to everybody on that Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, especially Ariel Torres, 
Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chumpinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Asia, G. Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Kao, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Don Mulemeister, Eliminator 86, Steampunk Sinner, Caleb Dougal, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Bobby Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Bobby Jean Torgan, Dr. Strawberry, The Wormhole, Barbara Macedo, and Vic. Thank you guys so much, and if anyone would like to join them on that list, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. Here's hoping that you guys are loving the horror as much as I am. And sweet dreams. <laughs>